Woods. I am with the Office of Naval Research Global, and I'm also with the OpNav staff that uh, works in the Pentagon for the Chief of Naval Operations. And I'm in their International Engagement Office, and I am the U.S. Executive uh, uh, Executive Officer or Secretary. We kind of use those uh, terms loosely uh, for the Ice Paper MOU. And you can see here what Ice Paper stands for. It's the International Cooperative Engagement Program for Polar Research. And uh, this is our first uh, IARPIC talk. And we have a self-forming team within IARPIC, which I hope you all are a member of, or if you aren't yet, please sign up uh, afterwards. And uh, we're really just starting uh, to sort of get some traction here within IARPIC uh, to spread the word of Ice Paper and how to get more folks involved. Um, I see we got a small group online uh, right now, so I'd love to keep this as um, as loose and open as possible. So please feel free to interrupt, ask questions. I'll probably pause after some of the more complex signs of uh, MOU jargon that that some people may not be familiar with uh, to answer any questions. So please feel free to to interrupt and uh, and ask questions along the way. I'll try to monitor the chat. I see Liz posted something, so thank you. Uh, but uh, just like I said, interrupt and, uh, and ask away. So uh, recently, I think this was early January, the uh, US Navy came out, came out with its new Arctic strategy. And I just pulled out some, some bullets here of the interagency um, call out that the Navy did. So that we definitely want to uh, collaborate with our state, local, federal, and indigenous partners. Uh, I'm just guessing most folks on the line here are, are the federal partner uh, flavor. Uh, so you know the U.S. Navy has made it a priority to work with our interagency partners, which we are uh, uh, definitely uh, excited to do. And hopefully, Ice Paper would be the mechanism that that will allow some of this interagency collaboration to occur. Obviously, uh, international partners, the Ice Paper MOU is a, a seven nation MOU. You can see the logo there of the US, Canada, um, all the Scandinavian nations plus New Zealand. So we're bipolar, both North and South for, uh, for international s and regarding the polar regions. Um, some other figures on this slide here, uh, the one in the center there, those are actually, uh, mm -hmm. and that's an Ice Paper flight that we coordinated with the Royal Danish Air Force uh, to get some buoys out for the International Arctic Buoy Program over the high Arctic. So that was on a Danish Air Force C-130 uh, with US and Canadian uh, scientists and researchers on board. And then the lower right there, that's uh, Rear Admiral Selby, that's my boss, uh, signing the MOU. Uh, that was our, the US signing was in the late summer timeframe and then the, the final international partner, Finland, signed it in late November. So, uh, you know, the, the main question I always get, you know, what the heck is ice paper? Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a multi-lateral uh, framework. So multilateral means, uh, you know, multiple nations, in this case, seven nations. Um, it's also all of DOD. So uh, yes, the U.S. Navy is leading it right now, but we have all the other services. So Army, Air Force, and even Coast Guard engaged. And then also uh, the, the bottom uh, bullet here of probably most interest to those on the line is that other government agencies can also participate within ice paper. So uh, think of NOAA, National Science Foundation, Department of Energy, uh, even academia can all participate underneath this MOU with a DOD sponsored project. And again, most projects will all be starting at the DOD or with the DOD, one of the services, but all the other government ag agencies can participate uh, within the MOU. Um, there are the, the nations again uh, that I mentioned already. Uh, the MOU itself gives uh, the ability to exchange information. So why do we want to exchange information? Uh, that information exchange will help us develop those projects that we're hoping to do uh, with these partner nations. So we can discuss technologies that we might have or, or uh, gaps that we might need to be filling uh, with our partner nations today underneath the signed MOU, which is great. In order to go out and do new work, uh, we need to put these things in place called project arrangements or PAs. You'll hear me say PA a lot. And that's where we outline exactly what each nation would be bringing to the, um, uh, to the collaboration. We don't need all seven nations to participate. It could just be uh, two, ideally it's more than two, you know, three to four, five, six, seven even uh, of the nations participating. Uh, to, to move out with these project arrangements. Uh, unfortunately, these do take a little bit of time you know, to negotiate, make sure funds are in place, 
um, and then make sure the scope of the effort is, is properly uh, outlined and written down and all agreed to. And then the financial contributions are put forward. So ice paper doesn't necessarily have that money that would go with it, but we would find the sponsors, for example, ONR uh, could sponsor a project arrangement that could include many others from other agencies uh, within the US as well. Uh, each of these working groups, so we do have four working groups. We've got environmental, human performance, platforms, and situational awareness. Uh, we're right now looking at, I'll show you some more org charts of the platforms working group, uh, most likely getting split into a few more specialized working groups uh, as well. Uh, I do see a question in, so no PAs are in place yet. Uh, again, the MOU was just signed. This MOU actually took almost five years to get into place. Uh, uh, we had some, we originally, you might see some older logos with Iceland and Chile were engaged at one point. And unfortunately, uh, through negotiations, they just sort of fell out due to uh, individual reasons within the country. But uh, it took us a long time to get to that November, end of November signing. And uh, as of since November, uh, we've been marching out developing these project arrangements. And uh, there are a few uh, kind of percolating within the working groups. And, uh, and I'll get into a little bit more of that here uh, shortly. Um, so yeah, so those are the four working groups, as I mentioned. So here are some of the areas. So the, the scope of the MOU, like I said, it's a, it's a framework MOU. So it's meant to be very broad at the highest level. Uh, you can see environmental modeling, sensors, comms, uh, platforms, infrastructure. So there's a, a lot of Army Corps uh, of engineering work uh, looking at permafrost and contaminants within soils uh, is being looked at. Demonstrations, personnel exchanges, uh, navigation, charting, uh, meteorology, sort of the, the traditional meat talk and hydrography, uh, human performance, medical physiology. So how do soldiers or operators uh, performance uh, change in the extreme environments? Uh, so you can see uh, you know, a wide breadth of topic areas that, that can be explored within the MOU. And uh, again, the, the goal of the working groups is to generate those PAs or those project arrangements to move out and do the new work. So again, ideally, uh, you know, most of the folks on this call, I'm assuming can find one area of focus uh, within here. And then we would get you lined up into the working group to hear what type of uh, projects that they are trying to develop. So uh, I've spoken a lot. I've, I probably have about 20 or 30-ish minutes of slides. So I'm happy to, again, pause and take some questions. Uh, you know, if anyone has any questions off the top of their head, please feel free to jump in now uh, or I'll keep going. So we wanted to make sure that we are aligned uh, within the, the DOD. And this slide's a little bit dated now, back to 2019, but the uh, Office of Secretary of Defense uh, put out a uh, strategy outlining their, their focus areas. Uh, you can see they, they were uh, focusing on you know, risk assessments and uh, adaptation resilience and coordination and collaboration. And our working groups really align well to each of these uh, focus areas. So you can see the, the EWG, that's the environmental working group looking at uh, modeling and forecasting, the situational awareness working group, um, human performance was mentioned. So we have a human performance working group. And then uh, overall, the strengthening of a collaboration within DOD, interagency and international, which is exactly what the framework MOU uh, covers. One other great thing about this MOU is that it's in effect for 25 years. So we don't have to renegotiate this thing every, every five years or so, like most international agreements. This one uh, will be in place for the long haul, which is outstanding. So here's the, that little bit more of a breakdown as to who, uh, the, who's leading the working groups. Uh, again, uh, you can see at Rear Admiral Selby at the top is the current US lead. He is the chief of naval research. Uh, we have Dr. Corvo at Krell up in New Hampshire. He's been our Army Executive uh, Steering Committee member. And then Dr. Bunning at the Air Force Research Lab uh, has been engaged as well. So you can see we've got all three services uh, covered pretty well. Uh, we're still working with DHS and US Coast Guard to get a little bit more of a senior level push. Uh, we do have Coast Guard folks participating in, in, I think, almost all the working groups. 
which is great, uh, but we are still trying to seek out that executive level um, contribution from Coast Guard as well. Uh, the working groups along the bottom there, uh, you can see the environment that's led by Dr. Douglas, Tom Douglas. He's up at Krell up in Fairbanks. Um, Dr. Martin Jeffries, uh, most folks on here obviously know Martin. Uh, he used to be leading that working group uh, until he recently left Krell. So uh, Dr. Uh, Tom Douglas up in Fairbanks, he took over that, that role. Um, Dr. Patrick Mason, he's, he's a department head in ONR Code 34, that's the Human Performance uh, Department, and he is the working group lead for the Human Performance Working Group. Uh, the platforms working group uh, sort of focused on maritime platforms. Uh, that's the NAVC, that's the CISCOM uh, for us in the Navy here in the DC area at the Navy Yard, and Jim Webster and Glenn Sturdivant uh, lead that working group. And then finally, uh, the Situational Awareness Working Group, uh, General Church Key, retired General uh, Church Key up at the Arctic Domain Awareness Center in Anchorage, Alaska. He's leading our Situational Awareness Working Group. And you can see, I know we have Dr. Sam Emery on the line. Uh, he's standing up a new working group or a sub-working group. We're still trying to figure that out um, between uh, on combat weapon systems. And then there's also a terrestrial platforms working group. Uh, again, these are gonna be born out of that, that platforms working group um, that's being led by the army and uh, Mr. John Sayers. So these are the four, uh, again, four main plus two proposed working groups. And I would also uh, highly encourage, I've got contact information on the last slide. Uh, if one of these working groups interests you, you know, to go ahead and reach out directly to that, that working group lead, you can re reach out to me and we'll make sure that you get aligned. Uh, just a little bit more detail on, on what the working groups are doing as far as uh, um, as far as far uh, kind of focused areas within the working groups. Uh, you can see the, the environment looking at modeling uh, all, all domains. So uh, modeling sea ice, permafrost, and snow, looking at observations. Um, the human performance working group has broken into sub working groups detailed on nutrition, uh, instrumentation. So that's looking at uh, how the warfighters, for example, their hands, their digits, the extreme digits uh, behave in an extreme cold environment, uh, how clothing impacts their, their physiology. And then the, uh, the platforms working group, as I've mentioned, is kind of splitting into this maritime, terrestrial, and then combat weapon system focused areas. Uh, you can see I put the Air Force on there as a proposed possible uh, space and air um, future working group. And then finally, the uh, situational awareness working group, looking at uh, navigation, mission support, comms, uh, tactical decision aids. Uh, one key thing you can see here with lifeboats, that's, that's just one example of how we try to cross pollinate the working groups. So we have, um, you know, people from both the human performance and the platforms working group looking at lifeboats together. So it's not, we're trying not to stovepipe these. So we're getting cross pollination across the working groups. And even those PAs that I was talking about, those project arrangements, yes, a working group might um, sort of be the lead for that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that a uh, you know an environmental working group PA that's on modeling wouldn't include folks from the situational awareness working group participating within that PA as well. So, and then the big bumper sticker there on the bottom is you know we're recruiting members to participate in all, in all these working groups from all the agencies within the U.S. So, again, I'm I'm really pleased to be leveraging IARPIC to try to you know get as many folks that are interested in these topic areas to participate within the working groups uh, underneath the ice paper MOU. Um, so what does it mean to be in a working group? You know, we, we try to have pretty regular meetings, roughly monthly. Uh, there's US and international meetings. So ideally we'll have a, you know, an international, or I'm sorry, a, a US meeting or two to discuss you know, where we stand from a US perspective. And then we meet uh, with our international partners as a larger group. Again, the goals of those working groups to develop those PAs or project arrangements and looking for agency support. So, you know, ideally uh, I, I have briefed this around to National Science Foundation as well as NOAA. Uh, there was, you know, strong interest in participating and, and seeing where they could fit in well. Uh, I put a little uh, example down here where a, uh, let's say there was an atmospheric studies project that the, the total cost was about 600K a year. 
Uh, so DOD, Air Force, Navy, um, Army even, you know, would all be pitching in roughly 500 of that K, but let's say NOAA or Agency X, I called it in this case, uh, wants to participate as well. You know, they could put something like a, you know, part of someone's time, plus some lab resources, computer modeling resources, et cetera, that they put a price tag of about 100 K a year on that. And that is now an equitable contribution uh, within the U.S., to meet that 600K a year uh, overall contribution. So now you've got DOD plus agency X as the, the partners within that project arrangement. The great thing here is that you're leveraging all the other ice paper participants that are also gonna participate in that, uh, in that project. So you know our 600K investment just went to a $3 million investment if we had a total of five uh, ice paper nations participating within that project. So you can see it's it's really good bang for your buck if you want to get involved. Uh, and again, you can you can offer up time, you can offer up resources. When I met with uh, Admiral Gallaudet when he was still at the NOAA Arctic XCOM, you know, I gave a great example of they've got a fleet of aircraft that can help us get observations in the Arctic. You know, flight time on an aircraft that could be the NOAA contribution towards one of these project arrangements if, if that's what the the arrangement called for. So uh, I, I highly encourage folks to get involved, you know, uh, use creativity, uh, think about using folks as part-time, you know, a piece of their time can be a contribution into the, into the PA as these, uh, as these agreements or arrangements start moving forward. But the key part is to be involved in the working group so that you know where, where those project arrangements are going. You can sort of get in on the early planning and uh, provide some inputs as to what you might want to uh, engage with. So this was, um, we, we have had a couple executive steering committee or ESC meetings. Um, again, Rear Admiral Selby there in the upper left, this is him meeting with his uh, six counterparts from the uh, other uh, ice paper participating nations. I think we had two on here from Canada possibly. Uh, so we have more uh, uh, eight photos, but, um, you know, it's been tough and obviously in a COVID environment. Um, ideally, these meetings take place at the international uh, level. Norway is supposed to be hosting this year. Um, and again, due to COVID, no one's been traveling anywhere, but we've tried to keep the momentum going with the ESC uh, Executive Steering Committee meeting at least once a year uh, to, to make sure that, you know, priorities are aligned, project uh, ideas are, are focused and, and meeting the needs of each of the individual countries. And here you can see the, the kind of, um, you know, vast uh, uh, diversity between, uh, you know, the, the different, uh, you know, heads of defense research agencies, um, you know, strategy and plans folks, uh, very focused on Southern Ocean ships in New Zealand's case, but, uh, you know, really good flag and SES level contributions uh, at the executive steering committee level, kind of setting the priorities for the, uh, the working groups. Uh, I have some examples of, of you know, past exercises. So even before the MOU was signed and in place, we've been trying to you know, coordinate really closely with our partners, mostly uh, Canada and Denmark. You know, we have other agreements in place beforehand, but we'd like to uh, capitalize on the ice paper partnership. Uh, this is one that I actually got to participate in as a Navy reservist uh, up in Inuvik doing some buoy drops for the International Arctic Buoy Program again and, and doing some uh, you know, great uh, relationship building. We got to work with the Canadian Rangers, uh, get us, getting us out on the sea ice, taking measurements. We were doing some uh, aerial surveys. We had uh, Canadian Air Force Twin Otter support, which was outstanding. And, and again, all this was under ice paper to, you know, say that this was a collaborative uh, opportunity. The Canadians provided the, the, um, the assets, in this case, again, the, the aircraft and the the landing zones, the ice camp area, the Canadian Rangers, and the U.S. was providing sensors and, and people in time. And then uh, probably the, the, the trademark uh, example I have is for the International Arctic Buoy Program, where we've been able to leverage uh, international partners, specifically the, the Danes and the Canadians, uh, their air forces to drop buoys for us up in the high Arctic. And I've uh, kind of thrown some, some dollar amounts on this of about a quarter million dollars a year just in fuel costs alone that we've saved by leveraging our, our partners to help us deploy these buoys. So 
Uh, that's that's great. And you know, I'm guessing most folks might be familiar with the International Arctic Buoy Program. It's run out of the University of Washington, uh, Dr. Ignatius Rigger. And uh, you know, this allows him to buy more buoys with the money, you know, the small budget that he's given. He doesn't have to worry about paying for fuel costs, uh, you know, when we leverage our international partners. Uh, one thing I want to make sure folks are aware of this is through our, our Danish uh, counterparts is the ISAFIC website. Uh, I know NSF uh, talks about this a lot, but uh, this is a great way to leverage the, uh, the Danish um, both operational and research assets up and around Greenland. So uh, we use this pretty well. We're, we're going to try to do an iceberg tagging experiment uh, this summer, hopefully COVID uh, allowing. We, we had been signed up to do it last year, but unfortunately, again, COVID uh, stopped that. But uh, if, if you're not familiar with this, Epic, I would highly recommend you just take a look around, get an account set up. And uh, if anything, even if you're not requesting support, you could see what other folks are doing in the area, but you could also request logistic support as needed. And then uh, one of my last pitches is we're going to be having an ONR uh, polar seminar series. And you can see the uh, the topic areas here, it's mostly platforms based, uh, but I but I do want to make sure that it gets shared out to the IARPIC community. So I'll be uh, creating uh, IARPIC events and I'll share them obviously within the the ice paper self forming team. But I'm I'm assuming it'll get uh, posted up to the higher IARPIC site. I think there's uh, four talks over four different days, um, so I'll, I'll make sure I get those input today. It's that first week of March, and uh, like I said, you can see the topics there, and I would probably point you to. Uh, Dr. Patrick Rose, he's uh, one of our science directors over in, in uh, Europe that's uh, leading this uh, effort. Uh, if you needed some more details uh, beyond what I post on the IARPIC site, but just wanted to get the awareness out there of some more of the Navy uh, DOD events that are going on within the polar regions. And then uh, here's my last slide, and I will post all these slides and you'll have all the emails, but uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, we have a MS Teams channel, which I know doesn't work great for folks outside of DOD, uh, but uh, we can try to get you linked onto that. Uh, we also have a SharePoint site, which is hosted by the Canadians. That's where we're trying to put most of our um, kind of technical information when we start sharing project ideas. You do need, do need to get a um, login for that, so reach out to me and I can get you lined up there. And then obviously you found the IARPIC self-forming team, uh, which, you know, I'm hoping to have meetings here, or at least, uh, you know, I'll post probably monthly at least uh, as to any updates, calendar events, et cetera, uh, you know, and try to maybe have some sort of lecture series or, or, or you know, a check-in every couple of months uh, with some sort of uh, live interactive uh, event. Uh, you can see we, we meet within the U.S., principles. So the principles are all the working group leads uh, bi-monthly. So every other month we're meeting, we've got another meeting come up here in March. So that's when all the um, working groups will, will meet together to sort of report out on where they stand on project arrangement, drafting, uh, any issues that they're having, any cross-pollination that should be occurring that occurs at these principles meetings. And then uh, the executive meeting, so that's at the flag and SES level, that's where our Rear Admiral Selby will get briefed by the US principals uh, so that he is prepared then for his international executive steering committee meeting. And that's tentatively scheduled right now for um, early May. And again, that's to be hosted by Norway, but most likely, well, definitely gonna be remote or virtual uh, due to COVID. So I think that's the end of my slides. I got some videos and uh, some links but um, I'd love to hear questions. I know I, I talk a lot. Uh, if people have questions or comments, uh, you know, please feel free to, to just speak up. And uh, again, I'm looking forward to interacting with folks and uh, please spread the word. Again, we're not, uh, we wanna be as inclusive as possible. So if you have colleagues that you think might be interested in some of those topic areas, uh, please um, spread the word, share the IARPIC self-forming team or, or give them my email address and, and I'll, uh, I'll make sure they get points in the right direction. So I'll, I'll stop talking and open up for any questions. Hey, John, this is Larry Hensman. Yes, sir. It's good to uh, good to see you. It's great yeah. to see how ice paper is really exploding. That's, that's wonderful. There, you know, it's, it was good for me to see all of these working group activities and that they do align quite well with a lot of the work that, uh, that IARPIC and several other 
um, organizations have have ongoing right now. So maybe we should try and, as I was thinking particularly with respect to the uh, environmental working group under Tom Douglas, there's obviously a lot of work that we're doing with uh, with observations, modeling it now and going into the next Arctic research plan. So that will align well with a lot of the efforts that we're doing. Um, so we should try and make uh, connections between, uh, between Tom and some of our uh, other uh, working, or we're some of the collaboration team efforts. Um, there are also um, there are similar activities ongoing with respect to uh, to say on sustained Arctic observing networks and with IOSC, uh, particularly with respect to the uh, terrestrial working group and the marine working group. So I think we can make good connections there too. So um, I think uh, a lot of the it's really clear, a lot of really obvious as far as how the uh, how the connections are made with respect to the uh, environmental studies. It's a little bit more difficult with respect to some of the human performance. There's not so much going on that I can think of, or, or you know, definitely nothing that I can think of with respect to weapons and that type of activities. But still, we can make those connections where they, uh, where they exist. So, so thanks for sharing all this information. It's good to hear about all that. And congratulations on all the progress you've made. We don't think we've really had much interactions with ice paper in the last year or so. So it's great to see how it's it's uh, really exploded. So thanks for sharing all this information. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you and to the executive group for, for allowing us to, to form this self-forming team. Um, I did brief, say on, is that Sandy still, Starkweather? That, um, no, he's the, yes. Yeah, she's actually the chair of the US group, the Arctic Observing Networks. And she's the uh, also the chair of the uh, international uh, program, which is say on sustained yeah. Arctic observing networks. Yeah, so we did brief, we, we met, you know, I worked with Sandy in my previous role at NOAA and uh, we did brief her on this already and yeah, trying to find all those connections, you know, but uh, I think getting the word out there more is the, is the key. So uh, I've got good connections with Sandy, we'll make sure of that. And then obviously the, the other collaborative teams, you know, the sea ice uh, team, the observations teams, trying to like, just get everyone talking to each other so that they're all interconnected, right? That's the that's the the real goal, I think, of this self-forming team. You know, it's not to duplicate work, it's to make it more efficient so that we're all on the same page understanding what's available and what's not. Actually, yeah, and what I meant to say too is it's really good to see Church Key is in that role as far as so he's he's obviously the uh, the lead on the Arabic self-forming team on the Arctic Domain Awareness. And so to have him play in, you know, wearing uh, hats, leading roles in, in both these efforts, that's the best cross-pollination we can get. Yeah, agree. Thanks, sir. Any other questions, comments? So Liz, I think you'll, you said you'll, we'll get this saved and it'll get posted so others can, can get to it when needed. Yes, I will be posting the recording um, both on the event page. So wherever, you know, where you went on the Arabic site to see, um, you know, the, the information for joining. And it'll also be on our YouTube channel where you can also find all the other um, recordings of our Arabic collaborations events. Uh, that should be up probably tomorrow. Okay. No, that's that's great. And again, folks have my email now, so feel please feel free to, to shoot me an email, sidebar, or uh, a message any other way. So I'll, I'll be standing by for those. And uh, I just want to thank everyone again for participating. And like I said, please continue to spread the word. I appreciate it. Hi, John. This is Caleb Schulte. I don't know if you can hear me very well or not. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for this introduction again. Helps understand exactly how everything's set up in the organization and that. And then uh, I did have questions to make sure I hadn't missed any of the environmental working group meetings. I know you said usually you have those monthly, but I don't know if we've had one since December now. Yeah, yeah, no, they haven't happened since December. And Caleb, you're, you're at Krell, correct? Uh, I'm actually Cold Regions Test Center near Fort Greeley, okay. Alaska there. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, so we, I don't believe, uh, I got to get on Tom Douglas to, to figure out when we're doing our next one, but I don't believe you missed anything since December. Uh, we've been having a little bit of a sidebar uh, talking about a uh, Finnish proposal that, that's come forward about a, a ducting project uh, that, that is a little bit environmental lead. Have you right. been talking that? So you, yeah, I did see the 
I was in the meeting about that. I did notice that for the looking at the different frequencies and stuff and how it's yeah. affected by the atmospheres and the even the yeah. sea ice and stuff. So yeah, but but I'll definitely I would say uh, you should see a and I'll double check to make sure we have you on our roster, but you should see a meeting invite here coming out uh, it's in the next couple of weeks. Okay, sounds good. Thanks again, John. No, great. Thank you for participating. Hey, John, this is Devin O'Connor from Krell. Can you hear me okay? Yep, gotcha. Great. Um, I'm curious about sort of how projects get worked through. For example, I've got a, an international partner that I'm trying to collaborate with uh, who is at Alto in Finland. Mm -hmm. um, and so the work would be sort of sea ice modeling, potentially some ship ice interaction. But do these ideas sort of get workshopped through these working groups first? And then if they get sort of given the thumbs up and they, they come out of these groups, is that sort of the procedure? Yeah, no, ex exactly. And, um, you know, if you wanted to do that work with Finland, uh, you know, you'd have to check, right, if Army has a, a bilateral agreement with Finland already. And, and if, they, if they do, great. You know, obviously, you're welcome to use any agreement you want. But if they don't, rather than going out and starting a new agreement, you can actually pull that under ice paper if you'd like. Um, where, where that saves you time is, you know, you don't have to get a whole new agreement started, but, uh, you also, you don't, you have to at least offer it to other partners, but they don't necessarily all have to participate if that makes sense. So, you know, topic area, let's say Sweden is interested as well. If you guys would be welcome in to broaden it out to us, Finland, and Sweden, that's great. Um, it doesn't need all seven nations to move forward, but yeah, sort of having a, uh, working group be the champion for that first. Um, that that's where I would start with it. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm always available. Uh, you've got my email and, uh, I will try to get as, uh, as active as makes sense within this group to, to keep sharing the word. And, and like I said, please continue to spread the message. And uh, I think looking forward to, to work more closely with everyone. So thank you. Thank you again for your time, everyone. Thanks, Joan. And thanks everyone for joining us. Yep. Cheers. Thanks, Joan.